you excited about what you're talking about? Expectations. Well, I mean, the expectations are always high. They just wanted to go uh, to the meet and actually do what we've done uh, so far this season, at the very least. You know, but you always expect that things might change a little bit. People might get excited and people might get their nerves to get a little bit the, the best out of them. And our preparation is just trying to keep things calm and try to keep uh, the kids in, in the right frame of mind so they can get ready for the meet this, uh, this next weekend. And then, this game, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of, lot of them, well, it's a first experience for everybody, even Andrew Evans, the first experience for him because he's the favorite. So that's a new experience. And he's expected to win two events. That's the first experience. So even the kids who've never been there who are nervous and the kids who have never been there in the same position are also all experienced something they've never experienced before. And the goal, my goal is, you know, having been there before, try to explain to them that you have to calm yourself down and understand that the track is still over, that the, the distance is still the same, that the people in the stands will add to it. And the fact that it's the NCAA, you have to sort of dummy all that down and just do what you've been doing all year, as opposed to thinking that I need to do something special, wonderful, unique, and jump out of the pit. You don't need to do any of that stuff. And the people that try to do that find themselves in a place they've never been before. And it's very uncomfortable because all of a sudden you're going a lot harder, a lot faster than you've ever done, and you panic. And that panic sort of makes things fall apart. Reflecting on regionals a little bit, what did you think of the way your team performed there? Yeah, you know, I, I think the kids that were sort of on the on the cusp, on the borderline, really did great. You know, we, we lost Brad, uh, and our guy uh, that's successful, who's actually been there and, and scored in the NCAA before, should be able to advance, but you know, those kids have the most to lose. You know, if you think about it, a guy like Brad is expected to make it. If he doesn't make it, it's a big disappointment. Somebody like Angelica, where everybody sort of have written off that she's not going to make it, makes it, and she has a lot to gain. So if she doesn't make it, no big deal. But if she makes it, wow, it's a big, big deal. Uh, and Brad is the opposite. You know, if you don't make it, big disappointment. And the thing I like the most is Becky and Andrew, you know, having the back against the wall, having one throw left just to make the final. Boy, that's a tough place to be, especially when you expect it to do it. And coming, coming together, and then Andrew delivering that throw when he had to, that stuff like that stays with you. When you get to the NCAA, you get your last throw and you're in second place, you can have that experience to kind of gain back on. I've been there before. I've had to dig down deep and deliver the goods. And that's kind of what I want from them, is having experienced it before, they can kind of be a little bit calmer about it. And that's the part I like about regional. Like a lot of our kids that shouldn't have made it, made it. And a lot of the kids in the 4 by one we put that 4 by one together 10 minutes before we actually ran it. We just got four people together and, and we started doing some exchanges. There was a lot of nerves, but you know, and, and my thing is I stay calm. The building can be on fire. You're not going to see me sweat and get nervous. And so the kids sort of ask me, why are you not nervous? Yeah, because I'm not nervous. It is what it is. We need to go out there and kind of figure this thing out. And you know, I sent the girls out. Typically, I walk with them and I tell them what I want to do. But this time, I told them, you guys walk to that line on your own. You walk to check in on your own and you figure it out. And it was a sort of a leadership moment for Caleb Barker and, and, and and Dominique Booker have never been in that position, and she told the other teammates, you just get out really hard because I'm going to be coming. And it's almost like it sort of empowered themselves. And, and you know, sometimes you got to sort of, sort of trust your gut and send young people out there and let them figure it out as opposed to just giving them the roadmap. And sometimes we handicap them a little bit by doing that. So I sent them out on their own, and I thought I need them to make it to the NCAA to figure it out. That don't come back without making it to the NCAA. They came across the line and they did that, and we came back with a four by four. It was the same thing. There was no dares, there was no Kenny running. And you know, a lot of people thought that team can't make it. And sure enough, after leg three, you can take his head by 30 yards. And people have started questioning what the heck is going on. And you know, we got caught a little bit at the end, but nonetheless, these girls got together and they decided that they were going to make it. And I think that's going to be the strength of our team kids getting together, making a decision that I am not going to be denied. I am going to make it because I just want to. And they did that, and they felt really good about themselves riding back that they did it. It wasn't some magical moment that Coach Flo had. It wasn't some plan that I had. We just put that stuff together. And I thought we were better athletes than we've ever been in the past, and we should be able to do that. And now, training this week has been really good. You know, people are confident. You know, Angelica's disappointed when she's up in practice because now she has expectations of, of things she can do. And, and that's the cool thing about watching them kind of develop and grow in their self-confidence. So is there not a fine line at all between harnessing those emotions at this stage versus letting them use this stage to well, get a step forward? We don't want to use the emotion now this week in practice because it, it's, it's like anything else. It fizzled out. You use it, you use it, you get to the meet. It's like, I got nothing left. So during the week now, and today was just a shakeout. We spent 45 minutes 
of jogging and stretching. They can do that on their own, but I just need to see their faces. So we can talk about it. We can, you know, pat them in the back, make them feel good. They tell stories, and everybody's figuring out what they're going to do for lunch, and we have a good time, and then they walk away. So it's almost like they sort of don't realize that the NC is coming next week. And I really don't want them to think about it, because when we land in Eugene, it's going to come to a crashing end that, oh, my goodness, we are here. When you walk into the stadium and you see the preparation, you see the scoreboard, it's going to come to that. So we just don't want them to get in that NCAA mode now. When we're just training. We just want it to be, hey, we're just at home having a good time, relaxing. When we get there, we'll deal with the business of uh, dealing with our nerves and, and our emotions. I know the sky's the limit for your program. What do you think? Are you, are you in the development program? Where do you feel you are right now? I, I, think, I think we're in a better place than we were last year because kids are beginning to have confidence in you know, this was just some dream that some guy was telling them a couple of years ago. It was me telling everybody else that we're going to be good. And other people looked at me like this guy needs to get himself examined. You know, we, we're not there. And, and I, I, I told people we're going to get there in a hurry. But we're going to get there in the strength of our athletes and, and their beliefs in, in themselves. And, and that typically takes a while to get the kids to actually believe that I'm at the University of Kentucky and you better be watching out for us. That takes a while to kind of foster that sort of self confidence and regional proof that, man, we're a lot further ahead than we were, you know, sending these kids to battle next week and knowing that they're going to compete hard and they actually believe that they're going to make it to the final. Oh, that's huge. You mentioned Diz and Kenny and then also Andrew. Uh, there's expectations here now. I mean, I guess that's a good thing for, for this program to have at this point, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you want to be counted. There's nothing worse than going to a battle and you're sort of discarded. Nobody give a hoot whether you came or not. And that's why I told the kids last year that the worst thing about going to a competition is that nobody expects you to do anything. Like your presence means nothing. You bring nothing to the competition. If you were not in your lane or not, first will be first, eight will be eight. But knowing now that us being there cannot sort of shake the outcome of who gets first and who gets second, who gets third. That's the cool thing about life is like, if we don't show up to the NCAA next week, the whole country is going to be like, oh, what happened to Kentucky? And that's what you want. You want that. Now, Kentucky don't show up. Well, yeah, but they're going to come anyway. You know, it's like you just don't want that feeling. We want the kids to feel that, oh, my goodness, we actually matter. Our presence will impact who wins the meet. The points we get will impact the score of the other team. So the winner could be somebody else. If Kentucky shows up and do what we're supposed to do, well, somebody's going to get less points, and that less points might have them get second as opposed to first. And, and that's the cool thing, knowing that your presence matters and you can impact the outcome just because you're a good enough athlete and a good enough team. How aware are, you, are your athletes of just the tradition at, at Oregon? I think they are. I, mean, I think Track Town USA, you know, you, you call it Track Town USA, not, not for any other reason, that it's Track Town USA. People there come to watch the meet and they sell out the stadium and, and it makes a difference. And they're, they're track fans. They understand track. You get on the runway and you wave your hands like Shaquille is a big clapper. She gets on the run, she wants to crowd the clap. And I already told her, it's going to be deafening. <laughs> I'm telling you, when they start clapping, you won't be able to hear your heartbeat. It's going to be so loud. And she's like, I just can't wait for that. So a kid that's sort of engulfed himself in the crowd and the excitement, oh, man, she might jump out of the pit. And, you know, Kenyatta's excited, too. And she started clapping. And, you know, she's, she's typically not a vocal person, but she's like, I kind of like that clapping. It makes me feel really loose. Like, okay, great. Just go for it. So uh, we want them to take advantage of all of that stuff. And that's why I, I, I want them to know what's going to happen before it happens so it's not a shock. I don't want to get her to start clapping. She's like, oh, my goodness, this is so loud. I want to tell them this is what it's going to feel like. I want to tell Andrew, when you get in the ring, everybody is going to pay attention. You're going to hear the whispers. That's the guy that's leading the country. You will hear that. And there's nothing worse than that because that makes you go, oh, my goodness, don't screw it up. <laughs> don't screw it up. And that's the last thing you want to do. So I've told them. They're going to talk about you. They, you're going to hear them talk about you. They're going to talk about you nonstop. You're going to hear the whispers. You're going to hear the whispers of your competitors. He don't look so good today, man. What's wrong with him? And all that stuff started playing in your mind. So I want them to be prepared for all of that stuff. So when it does happen, our uh, coach already told me this was going to happen. And I'm prepared for it. And I'm not surprised by my competitors uh, talking about me or the crowd yelling, hey, this is the, this is the guy. This is the Kentucky guy that's leading the country. Let's go watch him. All that stuff makes a difference. You know, I, I've already told Kenny that, that the double that she's going to try to do. Only been one woman to ever do it. I don't want her to get to Oregon and have somebody ask her, do you know that you'll be the second one to ever do it? That's the worst thing that can happen for an athlete. So I've told her this is going to be a 
only one of the women that's ever done it. So you need to embrace the fact that this is what it's going to be. So when they ask you that question, yeah, Coach already told me that it ain't going to be any joke. And I'm prepared for that. I've, I've embraced the fact that I got a tough task ahead of me. Winning both hurdles is very difficult. Those, those two races are completely opposite. One is long and pacey. The other one is fast and as, as explosive as you can call it. So we've talked about all that stuff. We've talked to, to Becky about doing the double and, and trying to go out there and execute the same throw and not getting herself behind. So we've sort of laid the, the, the game the game plan ahead and kind of prepared them for the worst. That this is, what, this is the worst thing that could happen. And once you know that, then the rest of it is fairly easy. Yeah, no problem. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah.